Hi, today we will be talking about febrile seizures. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the clinical presentation of a febrile seizure, understand the management of a child presenting with a febrile seizure, and also understand the prognosis of febrile seizures and be able to counsel parents on the management of a recurrent episode. Febrile seizures are a common cause of seizures in children. Let's talk about how this typically presents. Febrile seizures tend to occur between the ages of 6 months to 6 years, with 50% of cases presenting between 12 to 30 months. It is defined as the presence of convulsions with a temperature of over 38 degrees Celsius in a young child presenting within the appropriate age group. Seizures tend to occur on the first day of the fever, and correlates more with the peak temperature than with the speed of temperature rise. However, it is important to realize that seizures may occur before the fever is apparent and could be the first indication that the child is unwell. It is important to rule out CNS infections and inflammation, acute electrolyte or metabolic imbalances, a history of previous non-febrile seizures, or any defined other causes of a seizure when making this diagnosis. The typical scenario is a child presenting with a simple, generalized, tonic-clonic seizure. 87% of these last for under 10 minutes, and 90% of these last for under 15 minutes. Usually, there's only one episode within a 24-hour period. However, complex febrile seizures do also occur. These are prolonged seizures, or ones with focal features. Multiple episodes can occur within a 24-hour period, and in comparison to simple febrile seizures, these tend to occur with lower-grade fevers several days after the onset of a fever. Febrile seizure epilepticus occurs in approximately 5% of children. In these cases, seizures likely have focal features and last for over 30 minutes. It is unclear how a raised body temperature can lead to a seizure and previous studies on the etiology of febrile seizures produced inconclusive results. However, based on these previous studies, febrile seizures are likely due to a combination of several factors that are both genetic and environmental. There is often a family history of febrile seizures, and several genes have been identified that potentially play important roles. Polymorphisms or mutations in ion channels have been implicated as the underlying cause. Both viral and bacterial infections can lead to febrile seizures. However, viral causes are more often implicated, likely because of its higher incidence among children in clinical practice. Among the common childhood viruses, infections with influenza, parainfluenza, and adenovirus were more likely to lead to febrile seizures compared to rotavirus and RSV. HHV-6 has also been reported to lead to increased risk of febrile seizures and furthermore increase the risk of complex seizures and recurrence. Febrile seizures may also occur after vaccination. In particular, the pertussis and measles components of the DTP and MMR vaccinations respectively have been associated with increased incidence of febrile seizures. Diagnosis here is essentially clinical. However, if the patient presents with a complex seizure, you must rule out other potential causes. With febrile seizures, finding and addressing the source of infection is important. The need to rule out acute bacterial meningitis is a topic that has received much attention. According to the guidelines released by the American Association of Pediatrics, routine lumbar puncture is not recommended. However, it should be considered in the following cases. If patients present with a history of physical examination suggestive of meningitis, including meningeal signs such as neck stiffness, Koenig sign, and or Brzezinski sign. In infants between 6 to 12 months of age, without previous immunization for Haemophilus influenza B or Streptococcus pneumonia, or where immunization status is undeterminable. The reason for this age range is that meningeal signs in this age group may be difficult to detect. 
It is assumed that clinicians would be able to pick up signs and symptoms of meningitis in children older than 12 months. Lastly, lumbar punctures should be considered when patients presenting with fever and a seizure have already been pre-treated with antibiotics. Antibiotics may mask the signs and symptoms of meningitis, but may not be sufficient in treating it. Other evaluations, such as EEG and neuroimaging, are also not indicated for simple febrile seizures. While routine blood tests can help identify the source of infection, they are not recommended as routine for the purpose of evaluating the seizure itself. There is no evidence of patients benefiting from these tests. While most febrile seizures resolve spontaneously, in the event that an acute treatment is needed, benzodiazepines are the abortive treatment of choice. Intravenous diazepam should be given. If IV excess cannot be obtained, midazolam can be given through other routes of delivery. Paracetamol and ibuprofen can be helpful with symptomatic relief, but does not decrease the risk of febrile seizures and should not be used over-aggressively. However, as with all viral illnesses, aspirin should be avoided due to the possibility of Ray's syndrome. Current consensus in the literature is that prophylactic treatment for simple febrile seizures with anti-epileptic drugs provides no benefit and is not recommended. However, in children that experience recurrent simple febrile seizures, taking diazepam during a fever has been shown to reduce the recurrence of febrile seizures and is a possible therapy in this circumstance. Following the first episode of a febrile seizure, 30% of children will go on to experience recurrent episodes. There are several risk factors for recurrence, including febrile seizures that occurred in younger children, soon after the onset of fever, or at low-grade temperatures. After adjusting for other risk factors, simple febrile seizures have been found to lead to only a slightly increased risk of developing epilepsy when compared to the general population. In the event of complex or prolonged seizures, however, the risk of epilepsy is much greater. Witnessing your child have a seizure can be a worrying and terrifying event for parents. Complete patient management by the doctor therefore includes spending the time to educate parents on what they can expect in the future. Information on the recurrence and prognosis of febrile seizures, as we previously discussed, should be relayed to the parents. Additionally, we need to prepare them to handle febrile seizures should another one occur. Firstly, advise parents to remain calm. Remind them that most seizures will spontaneously resolve and we need them to remain calm to properly manage the child at home. They should place the child on the ground and lie the child on his or her side. This removes the risk of a child falling off whatever surface they are lying on and injuring themselves. It is important to emphasize to parents that they should not try to stop the convulsion. Also, many parents worry about the child biting himself during a seizure and it is important to make sure they understand that they should not attempt to put anything in the child's mouth. All these measures should be taken to reduce the risk of harm to both the child and the parent. If a seizure lasts for more than five minutes, parents should call an ambulance and bring the child in to see a doctor. If a child has a known risk of recurrent febrile seizures that last more than five minutes, diazepam should be prescribed to the parents for treatment at home. In all cases, after the resolution of symptoms, the child should be brought in to see a doctor and for investigation source of fever. So in summary, febrile seizures are typically simple generalized tonic-clonic seizures in children between 6 months and 6 years of age lasting under 15 minutes. Management includes identifying the source of infection the lumbar puncture is not routinely indicated unless the child is under 12 months old. Resolution is usually spontaneous and the risk of epilepsy is not significantly increased. Therefore, prophylactic treatment is usually not necessary. Parent education is key and we have gone through the information that should be given to parents to prepare them for a recurrent episode of febrile seizures. 